We are going to create an AR application with multiple images tracking. The cars interact with each other once they are close enough. We are going to create a new project using the template 3D URP. In this case, tutorial AR multiple images, then hit on create project. We go to window, package manager, unity registry, type AR, then select AR foundation and then install it. It is going to ask us to restart Unity, so let's hit yes. Make sure you are in Unity registry. Now let's type again AR and then let's install Apple AR Kit plugin if you want to deploy the app on iOS devices. And then Google AR Core plugin if you want to deploy this application on Android devices. Now we go to edit, project settings and we go to XR Plugin Management to set our plugins into the platforms we are using. So we go to Android and then select Google AR Core, then go to iOS and enable Apple AR Kit. Now we go to set up our platform targets, so go to Player, change the company name and go to Android. Remove Vulkan support. Now go to minimum API level and we change that to API level 24. Change the scripting backend to IL2CPP and enable support for ARM64. Now go to iOS and scroll all the way down until requires ARKit support and enable it. What's next is really important. If not done correctly, you are going to get a black screen, so please pay attention. Now go to graphics and double click on URP high fidelity. You can close this window. Now click on URP high fidelity renderer. Let's change this to single column so we can read better. Now we are going to modify all the URP renderers. So go to Add Renderer Feature and type AR, click on AR Background Renderer Feature and now we are going to do the same with uh, the other two URP renderers. Alright, now let's delete the main camera. Right click and select XR Origin. If you see in detail, XR Origin already contains a camera setup. We can keep the default renderer or select URP High Fidelity Renderer. Now go to XR and add the AR session. And with this we have our basic setup for an augmented reality application. So let's build this in our device. Go to build settings. We make sure our scene is selected. We choose the operative system of our device, mine is iOS and hit on switch platform. Wait a little and hit on build. Then we choose the folder we want to store our executable. Then on Android we get an APK file and we install it. If we have an iPhone we get an Xcode project. At this point we need to have already set up our Apple developer account on Xcode and our device connected. We go to Unity Phone, then Signing and Capabilities, enable Automatically Manage Signing. We choose our team and then hit in play. If we did these steps correctly, our app should show the camera of our device. If you get a black screen, please check the previous steps again. We are going to import the Unity package that is in the description below. Right click, Import Package, Custom Package. We look for the downloaded file, import all. On XR Origin, we add AR Tracked Image Manager that requires a library image and a prefab to show. We go to Markers folder, right click, XR, select Reference Image Library. We drag the Reference Image Library. For the prefab, go to prefabs and drag and drop any of those. 
Open the reference image library, click on add image. Let's move the images from the image folder to markers. Open library and drag and drop one of them. We must specify the size. These cars are about 10 centimeters, so we put 0 0.1. Okay, save and build and run. The result is the image tracking and the prefab we assigned. Now we are going to program the multiple images tracking. Add image, drag and drop the other image, specify the size. We are going to copy the name of every prefab we want to display. Look here one sec. And we paste it on the image we want to associate with. Do the same with the other prefab. Now unlock. Now it is time to create a new folder called scripts. Go to XR origin and delete the reference of the prefab. Inside this one we create a new C sharp script named multiple images tracking manager. Now drag and drop the script on XR origin. Set the maximum of moving images in two and double click on our script. Let's delete all this. And the logic of our script is defined by these items. Create a serialized field with an array of game objects to reference the prefabs to spawn. Prefabs to spawn. Then create a private variable to contain the reference to our AR tracked image manager. Create a dictionary that contains the game objects on the augmented reality experience, related to the name of the corresponding image, AR objects. Now let's get the reference of the AR tracked image manager on awake method. So AR tracked image manager is get component of the type AR tracked image manager. Also let's initialize AR objects dictionary. To listen the events of any change on AR tracked image manager, create the start method. Now we have to subscribe to the event that notifies when a change happens. So we look for it in AR tracked image manager, the event track image changed. And every time the event triggers, it executes the function on track image changed. We create on the stray method to unsubscribe to the event. Copy this and for the unsubscription, we change the plus by minus. Now create a method on track image changed. Now we have to instantiate the game objects for each image in the library. Create a for each loop for a prefab to spawn. We rename the variable to prefab and the type is going to be game object. Now create a game object called new AR object that is the instance of the current prefab. Set its position on zero. Here I delete this that I got. I don't think you are gonna get this. Define the orientation at it comes, so quaternion that identity. Now assign the name of the AR object as the current prefab. hide new AR object then add it to AR objects dictionary the index is going to be the same as the name of the prefab now within on track image changed we get the group of images linked to each event type Create a for each loop for event arguments of the type added that sends a list of images linked to this event. So the variable is an AR tracked image named tracked image. Create another loop for the images related to updated event. Create another one for the images associated 
to removed event. Create the function update tracked image that receives an AR tracked image and whose purpose is to update the visibility and position of the 3D object regarding its image. First, verify that if the tracking is limited or null, the object is hidden. So we get the object by the name of the referenced image that we receive in this function and we disable it. Type return to finish the function here. If the tracking is not limited or null, we display the object and move it to its image position. This function is called when the events are added or updated. Now if the array of prefabs to spawn is not null, then show the object on the dictionary with the name of the image we received and enable it. Now define the position of the object as the same as the image we received in this function. Finally, when the event is the type removed, disable the object related to the image that triggered this event. Alright, now it is time to drag and drop the references of our prefabs and build the application. Go to XR Origin. See where our script has the references, verify that the maximum number is 2, and let's drag and drop our prefabs in the prefabs to spawn fields. Save the scene and go to build and run with the device connected. Looks great, now the app recognizes both images. So now we need to make the cards react to each other, so this is an easy thing to do. Open the green card prefab and on the hierarchy we see this green car object with a lot of children. Now go down and see that there is a missing script so delete it on remove component. To make the interaction happen the car contains a collider with is triggered enabled. It also has a rigid body to make the triggering work. And enable is kinematic because we don't want to apply forces or something. Open red car prefab. Oh, save it first. Open red car and see that it also contains a collider with its trigger enabled and a rigid body with its kinematic enabled too. Delete the missing script, remove component, and save. Now create a script named car that will contain the interaction logic on it. Go to green car prefab and open the one that has the components. Go down and click on add component and type car. Select the script that we just created and save. Go to red car prefab and on unity 2s whatever, go down and drag the car script that we created and save this. Open the script and we are going to follow this logic. Create Create the list of cars this one is interacting with. To add a car to the list, we make use of the function on trigger enter that is called when a collider enters within our range. Now write the opposite function that is called whenever a collider leaves the range of ours. Create a variable of the type car that gets the component of the type car in the collider that is entering in our range. If whatever entering has a car component, so this is not null, it is added to the list of the cars this one is interacting with. So let's create add car function that receives a car object. On the cars interacting with list, let's add a car. Now create a public function named remove car that also receive a car. On cars interacting with list, remove car. Now back to on trigger enter, on this if 
let's call the function add car and pass this other car. Copy this and in on trigger exit, we do the same, but we call remove car instead and pass other car. Now, what happens when the tracking of my image is limited or none? Well, multiple images tracking manager disables me. So, when this car gets disabled, we have to ask the cars this interacts with to remove this car from their lists. So, create a function on disable that is called whenever this object gets disabled. If the list of cars is greater than zero, so it is not empty, create a for each loop where we tell to every car, hey, remove this please. So car that remove car and we pass as the argument this, this car actually. We are going to program the actions that our car executes that are sleep and interact. Create the function sleep that essentially turns off the lamps and runs the idle animation. And create the function interact that turns on the lamps and runs the interact animation. Where will we call these functions? Go to remove car function. If the list of cars interacting with gets empty, then we call sleep because there are no cars to interact with. Now go to add car function. After adding the new car, call interact function. Now let's add the references of our lamps. Turn on material. Turn off material. And the animator that comes in our prefabs. On awake, let's assign to animator the animator component that comes with this game object. Save. Open now green car prefab. Lock this. Open materials folder and assign turn on material, then turn off material. Open lamps. Select all the lamps on the hierarchy and drag them to the script. Save. Go to red car prefab, lock this, drag the materials. Expand this, drag the lamps, and save. Back to car script, create the method turn on lamps. Create the method turn off lamps. On sleep function, call turn off lamps. On interact function, call turn on lamps. Create a for each loop for the lamps where each lamp gets assigned a new material. So lamp that game object that get component renderer that material is turn on material. We do the same on turn off material, but this time we assign turn off material. Now we need to run our animations. Save, open green car prefab. Go to Window, Animation, Animator, and see our animations diagram. As you see, the transition between animations relies on the Boolean parameter is interacting. Copy the name of the parameter. If we check red car prefab, we see that the parameter is the same. Back to car script. On interact, let's add animator that set bool because the parameter is a boolean, parentheses, quotes, and paste the parameter's name, comma, true. On sleep, we do the same, but we set false instead. Great. Now, define the default state of the car whenever it gets enabled. Create on enable, 
and call sleep. Save. Now save. Go to build and run with the device connected. As a result, we got two cars that when they are on each other's range, they interact. You can add more cars and more images because the code allows us to do so. Do not hesitate in following me and see you in the next video.